Hey guys, you know I'm not above showing some outrageously off-topic products on YouTube. Just for a little tickle in the reward center and a temporary release of happy brain chemistry after having acquired a new toy. Today is different. Not in the happy brain chemistry department, but this is probably the most on-topic product that has reached my inbox in a long time. This is an AC coupled low noise low frequency preamp for finding the 0.1 to 10 Hz noise content of a DC signal. It's got a few more tricks up its sleeve than the one we've built in a different video. And it's from a Swiss startup which I find immediately likable. There isn't enough competition in the test and measurement field. And innovation in the precision analog niche has pretty much peaked in the 80s. So let's see what Euler Precision have come up with in their new LF-LNA-80. This device has a roughly times 10,000 or 80 decibel gain between 0.1 and 10 Hz. So it could amplify a 200 nanovolt RMS noise signal into 2 millivolt, which could then be evaluated directly by a sensitive modern oscilloscope. With a shorted input, it's said to have a typical 13 nanovolt RMS input noise floor. That's about an order of magnitude better than my buffered ADR1000 voltage standards. So it's definitely suitable for working with those, or with something like a Fluke 732 ABC. Lower, low frequency noise electronics exist in some research and arcane metrology applications. But in most scenarios this baseline noise is going to be plenty good. These are delivered with an individual test protocol, showing for instance a clean frequency response analysis. This is I think where my own LNA had a problem recently, causing me to report slightly too high noise numbers in the ADR mu video. Ideally the 0.1 to 10 Hz bandpass filter would make it look like this. But the response of an analog filter is never this perfect. Real world performance is more like this. The 0.1 Hz high pass filter roll off is especially impactful because it dictates how much of the very significant 1 over f noise that usually lives down here in naturally occurring noise sources gets through. A small variation in the 0.1 Hz roll off can cause a disproportionately large change in the measurement results from these preamps. And I think that's kind of what threw off my own preamp. Let's run LF-LNA80 through a full frequency response analysis and make sure that everything is indeed okay and comparable to other people's hardware. Rode & Schwarz MX-04 has received a few powerful firmware updates since we talked about it last time. And it is now actually able to perform FRAs all the way down to 10 millihertz. Wonderful. For this stunt I'll split one of the waveform generator channels into two with a T-piece. One of the two paths goes to an analog input channel for self-monitoring. The other one goes to a resistive voltage divider made from precision resistors that shouldn't generate too much excess noise on their own. The idea is to divide the oscilloscope's generated voltage by 10,000 to give the amplifier something that it can multiply by 10,000 without clipping. There we are. The sweep starting frequency can now go as low as 10 millihertz. Of course at the cost of an entire analysis taking forever. This built-in app is essentially doing the same thing as the VXI script I made last time. Except it's much more convenient with auto-ranging and it can analyze phase shift too. But that's not important for this DUT. I set it up to test 10 points per decade, so 10 frequencies between 10 mHz and 100 mHz. Another 10 between 100 mHz and 1 Hz, between 1 Hz and 10 Hz, and a few more the rest of the way to 13 Hz. And that is over an hour gone for a relatively coarse analysis. The result looks great though, exactly as promised in the test protocol. So I'll be using this preamp to update all of my published ADR mu noise numbers. And because this one uses a more common 1000 microfarad 1 kilo ohm high pass filter, they should align a bit better with other people's results. The reason for me deviating from the established recipe of harvesting a bunch of electrolytic caps and selecting the best for leakage current. And to assemble this huge foil monstrosity instead was to avoid dielectric absorption. It can take hours for an aluminum electrolytic cap to come to terms with a large voltage change and to reach an acceptably low leakage current again. Film caps that don't have to go through a complex electrochemical process at every voltage change are much faster than that. With these it would only be a matter of minutes. But it's hard to find film caps with a high capacity, a small size and a low cost. One could build this high pass filter with a lower capacitance and a higher resistance. But a high resistance in this position would represent a noise source. So it's a bit of a balancing act. One that Euler Precision claims to avoid with a clever compensation circuit. 
they seem to have the benefit of a compact, low-cost electrolytic cap and a very fast settling time after a voltage change too. Interesting, only 2 minutes after transitioning from short circuit to 10 volt, we are already in regulation or no longer railed. There is still a few tens of millivolt DC offset slowly tapering away, so we can't rely on any oscilloscopes built in measurements that quickly. But we can read and interpret the trace and appreciate that this will indeed be fully settled and ready after a few more minutes. This is making me quite curious how they accomplished this dielectric absorption compensation. I'll prepare an FFT noise power density spectrum and automatic RMS and peak-to-peak -peak waveform measurements to gather all the data about that Fluke 731B DC standard at once. Only 6 or 7 minutes after plugging in the 10V standard we are fully settled and ready to measure. The Fluke standard in this case is not a match for ADRMU in the low frequency noise category. But it's based on a very good SZA263 ref amp, so it's got its charms. I can't see a significant 1 over F noise corner in this experiment, so it has to be below 100mHz for both the DUT and the preamp. Noise. Leave a comment if you'd like to see a separate video about the Fluke 731B DC voltage standard. There is nothing in there we haven't seen before, but it's still a neat box I think. Just like LF LNA80, I like it. It's also supposed to have a 250 hour lifespan on an internal rechargeable lithium ion battery, about one or two orders of magnitude better than my 9 volt battery powered version. When the power switch is flipped to the off position, it can apparently be charged through the output connector, with an internal charge controller accepting between 5 and 7 volt. Also clever, but let's take it apart and see if we can spill some of its secrets. The outside form factor is the first of a few similarities to a certain Limax LNA design that is quite popular in the EEV Block Forum metrology section. It's hard to avoid similarities to that one, because it's just a very very good design. Unsurprisingly, LF LNA80 is a bit more complicated than that internally. Right away I'm seeing not one but three large aluminium electrolytic caps, one millifarad each. Euler Precision have very kindly given me the correct terminology for their magic dielectric absorption compensation circuit, in which the second electrolytic capacitor is involved. It's called DC servo, but it's a common technique from audio electronics, not a motor. Here's how it works. If this is our 0.1Hz high pass filter that is supposed to block DC voltages, the fundamental problem is that it doesn't at first. It needs time to reform its oxide layer and to polarize it, during which it allows a significant DC leakage current to flow. That goes through this resistor, causing a DC offset voltage that gets amplified by this huge gain amplifier, essentially always railing it. Euler Precision's remedy is to add another op amp here, and to make it aim for zero all the time. It can look at the huge gain amplifier's output to see if it has accomplished its task. It only needs to be slowed down a little bit, otherwise it would happily zero away our 0.1 to 10 Hz signal of interest. And that is pretty much the DC servo. It probably has a few more strategic passives to drown out this overshooty resonancy behavior. But yeah, fantastic idea. I'm a bit jelly that I didn't think of something like that. The low noise, high gain amplifier lives under this removable metal can. How considerate, don't mind if I do. It's made from a few paralleled auto zero op amps and these green thin film resistors which shouldn't produce a whole lot of excess noise on their own. They decided to put some 392 ohm resistors on the op amp non-inverting inputs. In collaboration with on-chip protection diodes these might help keep the op amps alive in the event of a catastrophic overload. But in collaboration with the auto zero typical charge injection current spikes, they might also contribute a little bit of voltage noise. Oh well, we've witnessed the overall very good performance, so this is probably a worthwhile trade-off. This seems to be the 10Hz low pass filter, using fancy few dollar per piece SMD film caps. At this stage we should have a relatively robust millivolt low frequency signal, so no need for ultra precise components anymore. The output from here gets AC coupled again with the third electrolytic cap, and then it's off to the BNC out connector. Further left there's only what looks like the battery charge circuitry. Very nice, lovely Swiss engineering. I'd love to see more from Euler Precision. 
and I hope you'll check out their website where they're going to launch this debut product soon. Okay, bye.